study guitar online with Berkeley's renowned faculty. Download your free guitar handbook now and discover how Berkeley Online can help you become a better guitar player. It doesn't really matter what kind of music you're into. If you play the guitar, you're going to end up playing power chords. But if you don't know the secrets that the pros know, they can quickly turn into a uncontrolled and noisy mess. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys the muting secrets that you need to get your power chords under control fast. Hey there kids, it's good buddy Uncle Ben Eller here with Premier Guitar. Power chords were one of the first things that I ever learned how to play. Whenever I started playing the guitar in the late 90s, some of the first stuff that I wanted to learn was songs by like Green Day, Weezer, Blink-182, all that 90s punk stuff. And of course all those bands use power chords extensively, but I had a really hard time controlling them and keeping the other strings from ringing out whenever I was bashing away at those chords. And that's because I didn't know the muting techniques that everybody uses but nobody ever talks about. Because I definitely don't remember learning any of this stuff in my guitar books or whatever I had back then. I've got my lovely Gibson Les Paul Custom here tuned down a half step, but if you're playing the home game in standard tuning, that's totally fine too. The techniques we're going to talk about are way more important than the actual notes I'll be playing. Okay, so power chords, they typically come in those two note and three note varieties that we all know. But the thing about those grips is if you don't know how to control them, the unused strings can ring out and cause you a lot of pain and suffering, like this. The secret is learning how to control and mute all the other strings that aren't in the power chord. So we're going to be muting out every note that we don't want the listener to hear. And that all starts with a little bit of technique under our first finger. So if you're like me, one of the first things that you ever learned is that we're supposed to play the guitar with our fingers arched up, right? Playing on our fingertips. And that's typically good advice for most things, your chord shape, scale playing, all that jazz. But for power chords, we want to break that rule right away. What you have to do here is learn how to change the grip that you're doing under your first finger. Check this out. Rather than fretting on your finger tip, which makes the finger curve like that, what I want you to do is to fret with the finger print, okay? So like right there on the face of the finger where your fingerprint is. That's what I'm going to use to mash down that sixth string. You'll notice whenever I do that, it automatically makes that finger kind of lay flat across the strings. Now it's important to notice, I'm not mashing up against those. I'm not compressing that and barring like I'm doing a bar chord. That's not the sound I'm going for here. I'm mashing down with the fingerprint, and then the rest of the finger here is just softly draped across all the other strings. Best way to show you how this should sound and feel under your mitts there is for me to take the other notes off of the power chord. I'm just fretting with that first finger fingerprint right here. And here's what it'll sound like if I go through all my strings. You'll hear the low E string loud and clear. Then the next five are just kind of muted. They're choked out sounding, right? That's exactly what we want. You should be able to hit all six of the strings with reckless abandon here. And it just sounds like you're hitting that one note. After you've got that fingerprint grip down, you can add in the other notes of the power chord, whether that be just your third finger for a two note power chord, or your little finger down there too to get that octave and make it a three note power chord. Now with this grip down, where I have one flat finger and then curved fingers for the other notes of the chord, I should be able to hit all six strings of the guitar, and it sounds like I'm just hitting these bottom three. Three live ones, three muted ones, just like that. If you get this grip down, it means you don't really have to worry about what this hand is hitting. You can just really groove and slam it out and hit the guitar really hard and not have to worry about if you're hitting the right strings or not. If you're hitting all the strings, you're always hitting the right strings, right? I just kind of swat for the general area of the notes of the chord. So like in this case right here, if I'm playing that fast, I'm probably mostly hitting the bottom four strings of the guitar. I'm sure I'm hitting the B string and the high E string in there sometimes too. 
but I've got those muted out just in case I do hit them with the right hand. And I want to give you guys a good down the barrel kind of look at what that grip looks like. Again, the first finger is very straight and flat. It's super soft under here. I'm not barring. I'm not compressing like that right there. Everything is just draped across those high strings. Fingerprint is pressurized. Everything else is loose and soft. Again, from this angle, you can really see what I'm talking about. Straight finger, curved fingers. That's what you want to have going on with your power cord grip. It always used to amaze me whenever I'd see like Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day playing live. He'd be playing super fast and super aggressive, but to my ears and my eyes, I thought he was only hitting those bottom strings. I was like, man, this guy's got the best aim in the world with that pick hand. In reality, he wasn't doing any of that. He was hitting all the strings and just muting out the stuff that he didn't want me to hear. Learning that muting technique instantly made my playing sound so much better because I could just smash the strings and really groove over here while this hand was playing damage control. Good power chord playing is like having a wrecking ball in this hand and the damage control crew in this hand. Now a lot of times we take that power chord grip and drop it down a string set so that way our first finger is on the fifth string like this. All the same principles apply to keep the high string sounding clean. You're going to be using that fingerprint to fret the root note on the A string, mash down your other notes, and mute out the high stuff using that soft underside of the finger again, right? Again, flat finger, curved fingers, you're going to be good to go. But even if you have all that going on, that low E string can still ring out and drown out anything that you're doing here. So we gotta learn how to control that guy, right? The way we're gonna keep the low E string quiet in this scenario is by using something I call tip muting. Okay, so here's our power cord grip. Everything looks good, but if I'm not careful, that low E string will ring out if I hit it with the pick, right? Here's how you're gonna combat that. Using your first finger, I want you to fret that A string in such a way that the very tip of your finger is just slightly butted up against that low E string. Maybe you can see it from that angle right there. See, it's just barely touching it. I'm not barring it. I'm also not moving it out of the way or anything like that. I've got that finger situated so that the skin on the tip of the finger is just barely touching the low E to mute it. Again, it just kind of sounds like a thud now, right? But if you hit it in the context of the chord, you don't hear it at all because these notes are way louder than that thud you're producing on the low E string. This usually just kind of involves fretting the A string so that you're a little bit lower on the fingerprint. You know, I'm not here at the very tip of the finger on the fingerprint. I'm kind of down low towards the knuckle. That leaves me just enough skin left over to poke that low E string and keep it quiet. In that example right there, you can really see how easy it is to transition from your sixth string root note to your fifth string root note with that little bit of tip muting going on off of the first finger. Just a slight adjustment is all you need to keep that low E string nice and quiet. And here's a good straight down the barrel view for you. Again, this is without tip muting. Hear that low E string drowning everything out. Here it is with just a little bit of tip muting. Much cleaner. But of course, a lot of times we play power chords that have the root note on the fourth string, like this. Notice the change in shape because of the string set that we're on, of course. Now this can cause a lot of problems because there's potential for the A string and the low E string to ring out and mess this entire thing up, like this. And once again, the solution is not being more careful and dainty with this hand. It's all about learning how to control the chaos with this hand. So if you're rooting your power cord out on the D string, you can do a little bit of tip muting and knock out the A string, right? Just butt up against it like we did the low E a second ago and keep it muted out. But that doesn't take care of the bottom string, which can still ring out if you're not careful. Now, whatever kind of power cord you're doing, whether it's a two note guy or a three note guy, your middle finger is gonna be unoccupied. So you might as well give it a job and give it something to do, right? With that middle finger, we can just stick it straight up so that the tip of it is just barely touching the E and A strings without really interacting with the D string that your first finger is holding down. Again, here's a dead string, a dead string, three live strings that I'm holding down, and one choked that string down here at the bottom. 
Again, if you're doing this correctly, you should be able just to smack the crap out of all the strings. And it just sounds like you're playing these three very carefully. This can take a little bit of getting used to. Your middle finger is really strong and you can accidentally fret those notes if you're not careful and end up playing some expensive jazz chords or something. You want to just barely make contact with those bottom strings, just enough to choke them out and that's all you need to do. Like whenever I have this chord grip down, I can feel these three fingers that are tense from holding down their notes, and this middle finger is really loose and soft doing its muting thing here on the bottom. Let's go down the barrel here again. Again, here it is with no muting on the bottom strings. And here it is just shooting the bird up here to the bottom ones, keeping those nice and quiet. Again, be really soft, really loose here with that middle finger. And that's everything you need to know about keeping your power chords squeaky clean. I guarantee if you implement those muting tips I just showed you, your rhythm playing is going to sound a million times better, especially if you're playing aggressive stuff like rock, punk, metal, anything that requires some power and aggression. If you're using these muting techniques in the left hand, the right hand can just beat the crap out of the strings and give you a strong, aggressive sound. like what we've heard on all of our favorite records. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks again to Premier Guitar for having me over here on their channel once again. Now get away from the computer, grab your guitar, and start playing some music with those squeaky clean power chords. Less clicking, more picking.